All right, so let's have a look at the MDT that we're going to be using in our streets keys for plus 10 and beyond. So starting off, we're going to do this three pull. We're going to run up the stairs. And we're going to pull these two over into the relic pack where we kill Earth. There's a pat here. We're going to pull this pat and the three against the wall. And we're going to use this wall here to line of sight and group them up. Then we're going to kill the relic pack over here. We're going to kill Earth, do the mini boss and then do the first boss. Then we're going to take these two into the relic pack and we're going to kill Woe here. Using the Woe skip, we're going to skip these two overseers and then you can elect if you want to go left or right. We go right. There are three skulkers here that are in stealth that you need to flush out. We're going to take these into the two at the bottom of the stairs. Then there's this padding mob here. Now these will pat, as you can see on the blue line, from one end to the other. You can elect to do them after your pack that you've just done here. When they're at the door, you could pull them in. You could pull them into the relic pack, or if they were all the way down here, you could start your relic pack and then pull them as they get in. The choice is yours. From there, we're going to mount up and we're going to go into this puzzle oasis area. We're going to stand next to the NPC so it starts the RP, and then we're going to move off into the post room. Coming into the post room, we're going to kill this pack in the right hand corner, and then we're going to move over to this relic pack here. From here, we're going to kill Woe in this relic pack. Now, one of your DPS with the Woe buff is going to come out the door, run all the way across and into the Grand Menagerie, and stand in here to start the RP, and then leg it back to join the rest of us in the Oasis puzzle area. The four of us in the puzzle area in the meantime will have solved the entire puzzle using the Woe skip. Woe allows you to do this at top speed in stealth, meaning you don't have to fight any mobs and you can get the puzzle solved extremely quickly. Then we're going to go into the Oasis and fight Zorgan. Then we're coming out. We're going back into the post. We're going to chain this pack with the boss. The male elemental is going to drop that haste bubble so you can use it on the boss. And then going to come out. We're going to pull this peacekeeper and commander together. Then pending on your pat here, see this blue line indicates where this pat's. If this pat is sitting in the relic pack, skip around it and go into the Grand Menagerie. If it's not, kill this pack over in the corner, kill Ur, and then go into the Grand Menagerie. We're going to kill the Grand Menagerie, then we're going to come out, and we're going to do this relic pack on the commentary that you'll see because we didn't get to do it because of the pat, and these two. Now then, to get our percent, we actually run around the back here and do these two peacekeepers with Ur, a more ideal and efficient route would have been to take like two of these peacekeepers into the grand menagerie and do them while we were waiting on the shortened rp and that way we would never had to have come out legged it around to do that and then gone back around but i'll have an mdt for that in the description we then go up we fight the last boss salami uh and that is it so let's talk about it and go through the commentary all right so looking at the commentary here so straight up even on tyrannical week these first three mobs really hurt two security guards and zomaz now the security guards throw disruption grenades purple swirls on the ground hard to see deal damage to anyone within a four yard radius and do a knockback they also use an ability called hard light baton which deals extra damage to you as a tank with their melee swings zomaz will do a radiant pulse it's a large burst of arcane damage you can't interrupt it. It leaves a three second dot on everyone in the party. I'll also do an ability called Proxy Strike, which summons a weapon that deals extra slap damage to you as the tank. So just be aware, they hurt. Once they're down, we're moving up the stairs. We're going to pull these two mobs over here into the relic pack. And this will give us two securities, one officer, a specialist, and the relics. And we're killing Ur. The specialist has got three abilities to be aware of. Stasis Beam, Glyphor Restraint, and Spark Burn. Stasis Beam is your priority interrupt. This stuns and deals damage to someone for six seconds. Must kick. Must kick that one. Glyph for Restraint, you can interrupt or dispel it. It's a dot and a movement speed reduction. Paladins can use Blessing of Freedom. Monk can use Tiger's Lust. And Spark Burn deals magic damage. Just interrupt them as a low priority. The Officer has three abilities. Hard Light Barrier, Reflection Shield, and Hyper Light Bolt. Hard Light Barrier is the one that you want to prior. It puts shields around the targets. Uh, reflection shield reflects damage mages can spell steal it and they do a hyper light bolt which is just magic damage again just kick if you can next we're going to pull the three padding mobs and the three against the right wall and we're going to use this corner here to line of sight so again there's a lot of damage that goes out and in these pulls just be really aware these mobs really do hurt in this pack you're going to have two officers two security one specialist and an overseer now the overseer is the new mob Beam Splicer. Summons a white line that rotates around. Don't stand in it. Shit cuts you up. Move the mobs away from it too. It also does a proxy strike, which we see uh, on the security guards. Summons a weapon, deals extra damage to you. So just really look out here. 
for those beam splices. Make sure you're moving away from it. There is a lot of damage going out in this. So again, stuns, kiting if you need to, slows, make the most of it. So we're going to kill this and then we're going to go over into the relic pack over on the wall here. So relic pack, again, we're killing Ur here. Uh, there are no new mobs in this one. Remember, just kick your hard light barriers on the officers and the stasis beams from the specialists. And then that is about it on this one. So we'll skip through here and we'll get to the mini boss. So mini boss uh, here, Portal Mancer Zohan. Zohan. No, that was Zoltan. A few abilities here. Empowered Glyphor Restraint. So same as the specialist. It's a dot and a movement speed reduction. Rift Blast. It spawns big rift lines on the ground. Don't stand in them. Uh, Radiant Pulse. Same as Zomaz at the start. Big arcane damage burst and a three second dot afterwards. And then Hyperlight Bolt. Just interrupt these. Deals magic damage. Now, once Zohan is dead here... Zohan, uh, once this this mini boss is dead, the portal boss will come out, Zofex. Now, you don't have to pull the boss straight away either. I don't know if people know that. You can run away and eat or do whatever you want and then engage the boss. Don't feel like this auto aggros, just in case you didn't know that. Now, Zofex, not an overly complex boss. We're going to kill Ur. We're going to lust hero on pull. You need to move the boss when he drops spinning arms on the ground. You'll be able to see one behind Zofex at the moment. It is like a spinning whirlwind. Just don't stand in those. Move the boss away. The boss will have rotating shields that goes around it. If it's between you and the boss, it'll absorb your attacks. So move when required. The boss will cast an ability called Impound Contraband, which steals a random player in your party's weapon, and it'll toss it away. They need to then run to pick their weapon up. They just need to run over it. The boss will cast an ability called Interrogation. Whoever gets targeted needs to run away from the boss. They will then get trapped in a cell, which you all need to DPS to break them out of that cell. During this, a line will come out from the boss to the cell, and the boss will start whirling its blading arms, full General Grievous style, as it walks towards the cell, so don't be in front of the boss. Now, there's several things you can do to counterplay uh, Interrogation. Warriors can blade storm it to avoid getting celled, Humans can human racial it, hunters can turtle it, and monks, tr monks can transcendence it. So you've got a few options there to avoid getting put in an interrogation cell, which you can see here, and then you can get more DPS on the boss. When you're out of those options, though, you will, however, just need to run over, break the cell out. As you can see, it deals damage when you uh, break the cell out as well, and then just get back on the boss. So we have a little mishap here. Ideally, we wanted to kill the boss and then go into the next relic pack over on the wall. The boss steals our warrior's Bobby's weapon with contraband, impound contraband, and then it throws it off into the relic pack, which is really annoying. We're killing Woe here so we can skip through. So straight away, it's got an officer and a special in us. So we've got two kicks to monitor on them straight away. Plus we've also got Woe's burst kick to manage. You can see throughout this pool, couple of the hard light barriers gets off, which is the shield that goes over other mobs. So you just want to purge that off ASAP if you are missing some of those kicks. The spark burns and things like that don't really matter. It's just magic damage. It's not the end of the world. But those uh, hard light barriers, they're the things that you really want to make sure that you're focusing and getting the kicks along with Woe's burst kick as that deals quite a bit of damage. So we make it through that unscathed, relatively unscathed. Uh, we're going to finish that up and then we're going to move through these two overseers at the door and we're going right, remember. Now, moving down the stairs, remember there are these three stealth mobs down the bottom here, the cartel skulkers. There's going to be one at the top that I'm about to run over. If you blood boil, you'll grab that or if you put any form of AOE, you know, swipes, thrashes, consecration, uh, rushing jade wind, you'll end up getting them out. The pat you can see just moving past on the rock there. They'll actually move past you fairly easily. You, you, you won't pull them if you're fighting here. If you wanted, you could elect to pull them in here. It's completely up to you. A couple of new mobs in this area, the wise guys, they'll cast hyperlight bolts. It's a reoccurring ability through this dungeon. It's magic damage. Light shard retreat. It can be really hard to see. It's a big void zone after they teleport. Just don't stand in it. The smuggler is going to cast a hyperlight bomb. And this is pretty important. Random party member will get a bomb on them. They can run away uh, before it goes off or it's dispelled. When it falls off, there's going to be a large white circle where it's going to detonate. If you get caught standing in that, 
you will be disorientated. As the tank, if you get disorientated, you lose aggro, people generally die. So just really watch out for that. Once they're done, we're going to move into the relic pack. Now, if that pat had been, you know, in a better position, we probably would have double pulled it in straight away. However, we just elect to get this relic pack here, kill Ur, and then we're going to get the pat when it comes back in. So the relic pack is two smugglers and a wise guy. The pack that comes back in is going to have a new mob in it called Muscle. They're going to have two abilities to watch out for. Hyperlight Backhand, which is a knockback. So just position yourself as the tank where you can't get punted back into any other mobs if you weren't trying to pull anything else. Uh, and then Chrono Light Enhancer. Now this is big damage. You want to stun this or kite it when it goes off or just commit a CD whilst you're standing in there and face tanking it as it causes the mob to deal quite a bit of extra damage. So no real issues through this. We get through this and then we're going to mount up and then we're running into the Oasis puzzle area here. And this is the NPC that I was talking about. You just want to stand sort of past, come past this NPC. And then that's going to sort of trigger off the event that goes on in there. So it's all set up. And then we're moving into the post here. So we're going to move in and we're going to do this pack on the right hand side here straight away. Post workers. So they cast postage stamp, which is physical damage. And they apply a bleed to the aggro target via an ability called letter opener. The mail elementals will deal physical damage to random party members via the ability junk mail. High uh, priority kick in here is spam filter. This applies a shield to another mob, reducing damage taken by 50%. So watch that. Expedited, the male elemental will put down this purple bubble which you can see right now. Gives off a haste bob to you and the mobs inside it. So make sure the mobs aren't inside it, but just your party is. Defective sorter, they'll open cages and let out smuggled creatures and chickens which run around micro-stunning anyone it hits in the area. Try and stun them before they open the cages. Once we've dealt with that, we're dealing with the relic pack in here. Same mobs and we're going to kill Woe. And this is when I spoke about where we're going to split up where one DPS is going to go to the Menagerie to start the RP. You will still get RP when you go there, but it's far shorter this way. The rest of the group is going to the puzzle event as you can pick up the puzzle pieces while the Woe shielding is on. So I'm not going to fast forward any of this just so you can actually see it all. So there's that bubble from the male elemental. We've all got the shield on. Now, Bobby, you can see on the map, he's going off to the Menagerie. And we're all coming into this puzzle area. Now we started, we went past that NPC, so everyone was in place. Cole J's gone and spoke to the person we get the, you know, the clue off or whatever it is, the thing. And then we're running around here. Now you can see a weak aura up here as well. This will be in the description. This tells you where to go and it's like printed off the map sort of thing. So you know where the placement is. So this, this just shows how much easier this makes doing the puzzle like you're you're able to just jet around here you don't have to fight anything you do it at top speed you're invisible and we're done now so we've completed the puzzle bobby is coming back from the menagerie um we've nearly completed the puzzle so now it's done bobby's coming back from the menagerie we're going into the oasis and yeah really really quick really clean really easy now i grabbed the guitar because i'm a chad it picks up all the babes. Uh, but generally, the tank should probably take the horn. DPS should take the guitar, sax, and trumpet generally. And the healer should go on the drums just as a general ease of setup. Uh, the instruments are important though, as successfully hitting the notes gives you a stacking haste buff, 1% haste buff. When you reach 12 stacks of the buff, you gain 25% damage and 25% haste increase for 40 seconds. So nailing the music is pretty important. Now in phase one, you're going to have these ads. You want to interrupt the suppression that gets cast by disruptive patrons and interrupt menacing shout that is cast by the Oasis security. So see menacing shout going off here. There's some crap on the ground that you don't want to stand in as well. This green stuff, just, you know, make sure you move. When your instrument notes come up, make sure you're hitting those. So you're continuing to get the buff here. It is really important. I'm just going to fast forward through our three waves of ads here so we can get to phase two. All right, stage two, Zorgon. So don't stand in front of him during his frontal crowd control ability. It'll, it's an ability called crowd control. You can see it counting down up here at the moment. It's got three seconds. 
Don't be standing in front of him when he does that. Run away during suppression spark. Use your instruments. If you've got like one of the instruments that shoots you away, like the guitar, you can use the guitar to get out of town. Like I could have done that. I don't, but I don't always set the best example. I'd tell you the best example. Moving out of the green stuff on the ground, watching crowd control here. Obviously we're killing Ur here as well. So you've got to watch out for that slam as well. You can see uh, another crowd control is about to in be incoming in a moment. So you can see it's really telegraphed which way it's going to be going. So just again, just make sure you're not standing and it will probably one shot you if you do get hit by it. Just be aware of that. And that's pretty much it. It's just a rinse repeat for this boss. And that is it. So let's fast forward and get out of the oasis here. Okie dokie. So we're getting out of the oasis here and we're legging it all the way back to the mail room because we still have that one extra pat to go in the left side of the room here. So as I said, we're going to pull this pat here, the three mobs, no new mobs to deal with. So we've already covered all this stuff. We're going to make the most of the male elementals haste bubble with this boss. So we pull the boss into this pack. We're killing Ur for our relic and we're using lust or heroism on this boss. This boss on Tyran especially is a really nasty boss. The boss is going to cast fan mail. It's a five second channel of physical damage to the entire group. Your healer just has to sack up and heal through it. Try and make it easier on your healer if you can with DRs. Avoid running into purple shit when it's going off and things like that. Money order targets a player for heavy physical damage. The whole party needs to stack it. It's a bright yellow big circle and the damage is split by whoever is standing in it. Classes can solo immune it though. Like paladins can blessing and protection, divine shield it. Hunters can aspect of the turtle. Monks can zen met it. Mages can ice block. Rogues can evasion it as well, I believe. The boss will throw out hazardous, li hazardous liquids, which you can see on the floor. They're those soak puddles. If you don't soak them, they turn into the hazardous material, which you can see on the floor. Try and get the important soaks for this. Tanks, you can double soak to make this easier as well. Just free up a little bit of space. The thing that's going to wipe you in this fight, though, is unstable goods. Every time the boss reaches 100 energy... Five packages will, uh, like bomb packages will fly out from the boss. Your group needs to go and pick them up and return them to the active shoots around the room. You are slowed by 50% when you are holding the package. You can throw them to one another. If you miss though, it explodes and wipes your group. So just be aware of that. You can also use movement immunities whilst you've got the packages as well. So Death's Advance, Tiger's Lust works, Blessing of Freedom, Shape Shifting also works as well. So just know that, but picking up those and getting them back to the shoots is really, really important. And getting these uh, liquid soaks in important spots so people don't have to leg through like the purple shit to get packages is also really important. Uh, as the tank, if a bomb is in the middle of some of that hazardous liquid, it's far better off you running in there to get it than a DPS chancing it through. They will probably die trying to go in and get the package. Now we sort of lose the plot here towards the end. Um, everything was going really smooth and then it gets this last 10% and everything kind of goes downhill for us. We do manage to recover and kill the boss, but I'm just going to fast forward it and sort of show what happens. Um, it just, it all just starts to cascade. We have a bomb go off. Uh, we've got two B-Reses, so we get the two B-Reses off and um, we we end up like killing the boss, but you, you it just it just went a little bit messy. Fan mail going out there to just kill everything else. Uh, last little last percent here, I kill that and then money order ends up killing me. So we, we made it. We made it. Doesn't matter. We, we, made, we still made it. Now, there are portals you can go through in this uh, dungeon that can get you back to areas. So I'm going to show you what happens here because we didn't actually activate the post portal, which is just outside the room. So what's going to happen here is Cole J is going to invis uh, Tiger's Lust and go and get it. We just wanted somebody who's quick and mobile to go and get it. Now you can see here are these portals around the room. If you activate the portals, they become active. The one for the mail room is over here. So Cole J is going to go and click the mail room portal. And when it becomes active, I'm just going to show you so you can see where it is. So here's the portal. If you run up and go through this portal here, here is the 
post portal that you need to go and click on to make it active. Now the post portal, that's, oh, 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 stop, stop, stop. That's, come on, mate. This is the post room. This shouldn't be this hard. That's the post room there, okay? The portal is like just behind it. So if you run out from the door, you can click the portal and that's how you can activate it. So from here, we are grabbing this single peacekeeper and we're taking it up to the commander, Commander Zophar here now. Commander Zophar does a power kick. Uh, deals decent damage, has a big knockback attached to it. So position your back to the wall so you don't go flying into other packs. Lethal, lethal force will link two people and tries to move them together. Don't touch at last eight seconds. What you can do here is when you get lethal force because of this positioning, see how I bring it around here? My back's into the wall so I'm not getting punted back. If you get lethal force, one person goes on this side, the other person goes on this side and you never touch. How's that? Last thing, shock mine. Bunch of traps go out on the grounds. Big surprise. Don't stand in them. All right, so once commander is down, we are going to see if where this pad is. Now, see how this pat is in an awkward spot because we want to do that relic pack. So we're just going to decide rather than waiting for them, we're just going to run through here and go into the Grand Menagerie to do this next trio of bosses. Uh, so first boss here, Al Crux. Uh, there's also RP here as well. So even though we went and started the RP, there is still RP. Just take note of that, which is really annoying in M+. So, uh, Owl Cracks here. Run away during Grip of Hunger. That's really important. Dodge the Grand Consumption Orbs. Now, you can remember their fall pattern. So this circle here was the first one to come down. This is the second overlapping circle here. So what you can do is find the first circle that is coming down out of any of this pattern. As soon as this goes off, just move into it and you're safe. So I'm standing in this one here. That goes off, move into it, safe. So that's how you judge the pattern for that. Gluttony is an ability cast out by the boss that goes on the nearest player to the boss. 21 second buff. It only really matters when the second boss is active as you absorb this, uh, you go around and absorb all the orbs that come out. Gives you a stacking 5% damage buff. So ensure that your pumpers are getting that when the second boss is out. If you soak orbs without the gluttony buff in phase two, you take damage. So just make sure you're avoiding them. So... Pretty straightforward on this one. It's just dodging that pattern that's a big thing and moving out on the grip of hunger, which is the most important thing. Now, okay, so second boss comes out, Acolyte or however you say it. Now, whoever has Gluttonous Feast can now absorb the orbs that are coming out of this boss, gaining that stacking damage buff, which is what you want. Now, Flagoration Protocol, uh, you want to get a purge on this shield. Otherwise, you can DPS through the shield and interrupt it. But if you've got a purge, Purge that sucker, interrupt it off straight away. Your DPS or healers need to spread out if you have the big circle on them as well. So just be aware of that. I try and keep this boss in a corner. I absolutely make sure that you kill the boss in a corner. That way the orbs can only come out of one direction, making it far easier to soak and get that damage buff built up really quickly. It also makes them easier to dodge, I think, as well as this fight goes on. So that is pretty much it on this. You can see that purification protocol, the big circles, just making sure you move out of those. Uh, here comes, you can see that uh, gluttonous as well, just soaking up all those orbs, nice and easy in the corner. So Venza, Whirling Annihilation, seven yard blade storm. Just run away from this and watch the pull back towards the boss. Can get hairy when you are getting pulled towards the boss with a bunch of orbs floating around you. So just be aware of that. Chains of Damnation. So this will root someone in place until they're DPSed out. It is only a root though. So remember, you can DPS your own chain. Don't wait for other people to get on this. Start DPS in your own chain straight away. It's really important. You want to kill this second boss in the corner. So I'm trying to pull it back into this corner. You want it to die in a corner. It doesn't matter where it is. You can kill it in the doorway, the other side of the room. Just kill it in a corner. That's the most important thing. You can see the Whirling Blade Storm here sucking us all back in. This middle of the room, nice and free. The orbs bounce off the walls as well, so they don't go away. So just keep that in mind as well. Person with the uh, gluttony, just making sure they're soaking up all those orbs, trying to get as much damage as they can to chalk through this boss. So that is pretty much it. There's nothing else really to the boss from here. It's those abilities on rinse, repeat. Dodging the orbs and that's about it. So we're going to skip through and get through to the end here. And then we are going to come back out. Now we need the relic pack 
in the corner. And we're also going to grab two of these peacekeepers here. Now, as I mentioned, there's two routes in the MDT. There's the one that we do on the video here, and then there's a, a far more ideal one. These two peacekeepers, or the peacekeeper and the spark caster, sorry, there's another two down here, which would have been far more ideal to take two down there into the room, do them while RP was going on, and then come back out and do this double pull and go up to the last boss. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's in the MDT. Now, you can't pull the peacekeeper over that plant island thing in the middle there because that's exactly what i was trying to do so i actually have to go all the way around here to pull it i couldn't get any social aggro on it i couldn't cast an ability through the tree that actually kind of makes sense when you say it i guess uh but pulling this relic pack here pulling it back because i don't want the pat and then i'm just going to grab that peacekeeper and the spark caster there so we're going to get through them i don't think i covered off what the peacekeepers do they don't do a lot failing shield reduces their damage taken by 75 percent and reflects magic damage so just stun them when that goes off and they'll also do a quelling strike it targets someone in ranged and leaps to them it is actually kind of important when you're fighting peacekeepers make sure everyone is stacked or within 10 yards if they do that they won't actually cast quelling strike which is that leap so just know that now we're two percent short there was those two down there that we should have got which would have made it a lot quicker instead we're going to run all the way around the back here and we're going to do this relic pack with the two peacekeepers here and we're going to kill her i guess if you needed cds back up before the boss this is be an okay option to do that but anyway that's what we did we're running back here to the console and we're going up to fight the very last boss here now there's rp at the start here you can actually come up here before the boss starts to get the rp rolling now, there's a lot that can go wrong on this last boss. The fight heavily relies around going through the correct relocators and making a quick decision for your group around which relocator you are going to use and go through. Now, there are three sets of relocators, two shapes in each of those. So six relocators in total. There's two squares, two circles, two triangles. Now... You're going to use those shapes by running into it. And if you run into a square, it will port you to the other square that's floating around. Same for the triangle, same for the circle. Zami is going to cast an ability called Shuri, which is an expanding ring of arcane energy. And if you get hit by that, you take arcane damage for 10 seconds every one second. You need to use the relocator shapes. You can see it coming out here. Just skip from the outside to the inside like Zymox. So we went into the square on the outside, came out at the square on the inside. Zazami is also going to cast Divide, which will split the room first in half and then into quadrants. If you get stuck on a different side, you are line of sight from your group and the boss. You need to use the relocators to move so you're all on the same side. The boss will also teleport and cast Shuri through this as well, so just be aware of that. Lastly, Zazami uses a secret technique, a two-part technique called Double Technique, after divide he'll teleport and he'll start this cast upon completion he'll hurl burning blades at all players inflicting a huge amount of fire damage every one second for 10 seconds it's pretty much a wipe this spell has to be interrupted two times to prevent from casting you pretty much wipe as i said if it goes off there's really no advantage to holding out really late on the interrupt either. The first interrupt, however much time you take, just sets into the second amount of interrupt time you've got as well. So there's no real big advantage to letting this deal down. I guess you could say whilst it's casting, it's not doing anything else. So there is that, but around interrupt times, not so much. So you can see double technique going off here. We're going through the circle to get back here. This makes it easy if you've got somebody you know, really calling this out. Uh, it, it just, yeah, it, it makes it easier if one person's kind of steering the group. You can see the divide coming off here as well. Chewie caught on the other side there. So he has to go two parts uh, through triangle and then through another one to get to us. We end up going through circle there because there is a uh, teleport with double technique going. So we interrupt the first one nice and early. So we get the extra time on this one. So I think I may have been unclear on the interrupt, but what I meant was don't let the first cast go down to seconds. Interrupt the first one really quickly, and then you'll get extra sort of amount of time on your second one is what I was trying to say. So interrupt first double technique quickly, then let the second cast go down to sort of the wire. And that is pretty much it. This is all about using the relocators to judge the shuries that's coming through, as you can see right there, making sure that you try not to get stuck with these divides. And if you do, quickly getting back to the boss 
Uh, that is about it. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I'll see you all next time. See you, legends.